Good evening all and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers update, the first for the 2013-2014 season. It's great to have you all back with us. My name's Chris Nitzo. Let's get started. Looking at the latest radar imagery across Australia, we see that the tropics are fairly benign for this time of year. Normally we'd expect a little bit more uh, scattered thunderstorm activity. We're not getting that at the moment. It has sort of started uh, reasonably slowly, particularly for the Queensland region. The Northern Territory has started off pretty well. Uh, some pretty good storms going through the Darwin area a few days ago. The Pilbara is also starting to fire as well. However, we're not seeing the heat lows that we tend to associate this time of year just yet. It has been, uh, the temperatures in the Pilbara have been around about average or slightly below average, which may, may be the reason behind uh, why we haven't seen those heat lows develop quite as much as they tend to do this time of year just yet. The satellite in image across Australia and the animation over the past 24 hours shows a fairly similar picture. The tropics fairly well benign for this time of year. We do see some fairly heavy thunderstorm activity around Papua New Guinea. Uh, also a little bit happening around the Solomons and Indonesia which is quite normal for this time of year. But even that area isn't probably firing as much as it normally would for early November. Across the south of the continent we still see the cold fronts sweeping across the southern parts of the southern states and until we start to see those uh, head a little bit further south we can't really be looking at cyclone activity or cyclone potential in the north parts of the country just because of the position of the jet stream. The jet stream's too far north, it creates a lot of wind shear and that's what we're seeing at the moment. A lot of our graphics tonight are coming from WeatherZone, so thanks to them for providing these free graphics across Australia. We've got the uh, next seven days looking fairly dry over most of the continent, just some light shower and storm, or, or not, so, not sorry, light storm activity, but isolated storm activity across most parts of the northern parts of the continent, um, and also some, some slightly heavier stuff in the southern inland parts of Queensland that the model's predicting. But overall, nothing substantial, a little bit happening around the Torres Strait and PNG over the next week but that's more associated just with general thunderstorm activity not so much with any potential tropical low development if we head up a little bit further east towards the Fiji region we do see the South Pacific convergence zone which always tends to be in this region uh, is going to be reasonably active as well however no recognized low pressure systems in the, on the cards at the moment over the next seven days some of the modelling, and, and, and GFS isn't the only one on this, uh, is predicting a trough system to develop in the Coral Sea over the next uh, the seven-day period after that, so in the second week of November. However, once again, we're not looking at that as sub suspect for development into a cyclone. Uh, just might give a, a fair bit of rain over the Coral Sea region. And once again, the South Pacific Convergence Zone fairly active, uh, which is quite normal for this time of year. Uh, we do tend to see uh, basically what happens here in this region we see those winds. Uh, normally we see southeasterly winds throughout most of the coral and the Pacific Coral Sea and the Pacific Ocean. But what we also get coming in from here is a northeasterly wind and those southeasterlies and northeasterlies can collide and create an enhanced area of shower and storm activity over the region between sort of the Solomons and uh, well east of the Dateline. And what happens is that this region varies and moves west and east depending on uh, where this convergence zone will lie. But overall it doesn't tend to move west of the Solomons and it doesn't tend to move too far east of the Dateline. But anyway, uh, interest in northeast Queensland would be watching this, particularly this trough system that could form um, in here in the Coral Sea, just out of interest because it may enhance some shower activity that makes it on to the coastline. So let's talk about the season coming up. And the season coming up, the Bureau has forecast a fairly average season coming into Australian into the Australian region, and we've got. An average of four tropical cyclones developing in the Coral Sea or moving into the eastern region. And out of those four, we tend to see one that crosses the coast per season. It's about 25 to 30 percent of systems actually that form here make it to the coast. So if we're looking at an average of about four cyclones, we're well, looking at one to cross the coast. Now remember, that doesn't may not sound like much, but it only takes one uh, big system to impact the lives of a lot of people, particularly in this eastern seaboard compared to the northern and western seaboard, just simply because of the population density uh, anywhere north of the Gold Coast. You've got a uh, fairly high population density all the way up to Cairns uh, on that eastern seaboard. So one cyclone here, uh, we're not trying to place importance of one region over the other, but one cyclone here has the potential to affect a lot more people than it does uh, in the northern or western uh, regions of Australia. In the northern area, we tend to see three tropical 
tropical cyclones and out of those we might see one impacting the actual uh, land mass directly so an average there of three with one to impact the land mass directly now the northwestern subregion averages five tropical cyclones out of those we would expect two to cross the coast uh, and possibly one of those to be a severe impact uh, or, or have some sort of severe impact on the coastline so a category three plus now it's interesting to note that the uh, really uh, there is no clear indication based on all the modeling that we've seen uh, as to whether we're going to see higher numbers lower numbers so it's a fairly safe forecast this one by the bureau and it goes pretty much with what the long-term modeling suggests there is some hint in some of the longer term models that this part of the coastline will be more active again and this part of the coastline in the east will be less active again uh, there is some modeling that, that was suggesting that however once again take that with a grain of salt because it is so far out those models don't tend to be very accurate uh, overall the western region don't forget extends a lot further west than we think out to 90 degrees 90 degrees east which is a long way off the coast and in this entire region we're going to see seven cyclones but as I say this is really the sub region that we're very interested in because these are the ones that tend to affect the coastline uh, so in the northwestern region we see about 40% of the cyclones that form here actually hit land uh, as I say compare that to the eastern region where we see about 25 to 30 percent so we do tend to see more cyclones deflected away from the coast in the east than there are in the west also important to note that a lot of the cyclones that end up hitting this region here uh, actually start in the or have their origins in the northern region so they might start here as a very low pressure system as a very weak low pressure system and then eventually travel in that direction and this is the general path that cyclones tend to take in that part of the world whereas in the eastern region they tend to push to the west and then recurve to the southeast and that's why a lot of them get deflected off the coast uh, and that's why we see a, a lower um, a lower frequency and a lower percentage of strikes on the eastern seaboard compared to the western seaboard. Looking a little further afield, uh, out, to our, out to our east in the Fijian region, we're going to see in this eastern region uh, an average of 11 tropical cyclones per season and uh, pretty much an average season out there as well according to most of the data. However, interestingly, a lot of the model guidance is suggesting that the pressures in this region here will be lower in the next couple of months at least uh, compared to normal. So we will see lower than normal pressure here, which obviously uh, can be interpreted in many ways. However, you could always assume that the lower pressure does tend to in increase cyclone chances, particularly over the next couple of months in this region. However, as I say, the official word is 11 tropical cyclones for the area and pretty well an average season. And an average season also for the western parts. Now, we've already talked about the Coral Sea region, but it's that Solomon Island islands to Vanuatu area uh, that does tend to see some cyclones as well so a lot of the cyclones that that form in this region they tend to move in this direction and, and cross just before making it to the Australian region which starts at 160 and so what we see there is probably another two or three that might do that um, in, a, in an average season compared to the ones that actually hit uh, or the, the ones that actually cross into Australia. So there you go, folks. It's pretty average at the moment. So average doesn't mean good. Average doesn't mean bad. It just means uh, the stock standard year that we would expect. If we take a multi-model look around the tropics, and this is the uh, uh, looking at a number of different models, looking at the precipitation, which is the amount of rainfall uh, or the, the chances of seeing above or below average rainfall over the next three months, we can see that overall that Coral Sea region between sort of the tip of PNG out towards Vanuatu, most of the models are predicting a drier signal in that region over the next couple of months. Uh, and contrary to what I just showed you in the in the two week period where we might see that trough system form in the Coral Sea, overall uh, the modelling is quite intent on developing a fairly dry slot here or a dry region over the next three months at least uh, and meanwhile they're also fairly intent on tipping a, f a slightly wetter than normal period coming up for the Pilbara and Gascoigne region but overall in Australia uh, the overall Australian uh, climate or, or rainfall estimates are fairly average so they're between 40 to 60 percent which is quite normal and is tends to tends to disagree a lot with the Bureau of Meteorology's official outlook if we then take a look at the uh, 
precipitation probabilities for the next three months after that, so January, February, March, when we're getting right into the wet season, we still see a dryish signal here over the Coral Sea. However, it's nowhere near as pronounced as it was uh, in the next couple of months, and we've lost that wet signal over the Pilbara and Gascoigne. And over, overall, most of Australia is still looking at fairly average conditions, although I do have to once again caution you, this is now looking six months, up to six months in the future. So it's a lot further than the Bureau is willing to, willing to go with their outlooks. And once again, this is unofficial. It is just a conglomerate of models where they put them together and they spit out um, some raw data here. And we can see that overall modelling at the moment, fairly neutral as to what's going to happen. As I say though, it is looking at a slightly reduced potential of cyclone activity here in this region and a slightly enhanced activity potential here in this region. So it will be interesting to see if the models continue with that as we get further into the, into the cyclone season. So taking a look at November a little bit closer into, into the forecast period, we can see that over the next week, this is now we're looking at the MJO just out of interest. For those of you that don't know what the MJO is, I'm not going to go over it because it's going to take too long. But overall, basically when this little squiggly line, this little green squiggly line gets into uh, phases, late phase 3 into phase 4, these are the phases here, and into phase 5, even partly into the early parts of 6, this is when we see the activity around Australia increase, both the chances of cyclone activity and also the chance of rain activity, particularly in terms of thunderstorm and convergence zones developing and things like that. So over the overall, this is now for the next month, up to the 29th of November. By the 29th of November, we start to see the MJO expected to be in phase three. So still a little early by the 29th of November for Australia to see much activity. However, you can see that it's creeping into the Australian region in early December. And that's what leads, leads us to believe that coming into early December, we might see enhanced chances of cyclone formation, at least in the uh, Southeast Indian Ocean and also over Australia. That does not necessarily mean the monsoon's going to start that early, but it does mean that we might see just the potential uh, of uh, some cyclone development there. Some of the mid-term or mid to longer term modelling is showing some signs of a, of a weak low possibly forming into a cyclone in the middle of the Indian Ocean, uh, so sort of somewhere between Africa and Australia. Uh, but at this stage, nothing suggesting Australia in the cyclone firing line for November. Things can obviously change, but in the broad scale pattern, we should start to see an increase in activity over Australia in early December if all things go to plan. However, it is the weather and it hardly ever does go to plan. So I'm going to leave you with a fairly depressing look at particularly the inland parts of Queensland who have seen some of their driest uh, 12 months, some of it close to the lowest on record in terms of rainfall, if not that, at least in the bottom 10% of rainfall uh, since the start of November last year through to the end of October this year. So it's not a very pleasant looking um, a pleasant looking map. And look, to be honest, there's nothing in the in the early forecasting for the next uh, seven to ten days to suggest that anything's really going to change in this region. Not much rain happening for this area. And unfortunately, this is uh, a lot of grazing properties here, a lot of cattle properties, um, and they're not looking fantastic for, the, for at least the next couple of weeks. There is, as I say, as that MJO starts to push eastwards, assuming, of course, that it can uh, maintain some intensity, there may be some light at the end of the tunnel towards the end or latter parts of November and uh, early December uh, for in terms of storm activity. But at this point in time, uh, it's looking pretty grim for this region for at least the next couple of weeks and also looking pretty warm as well. So uh, hot conditions and the dry conditions to continue for inland parts of Queensland, unfortunately. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching our first one. Our next one, we'll issue these twice a week now for the first few weeks until things start to get interesting. And once things start to get interesting, uh, they uh, will pick it up to you every night. So they'll tend to be about 10 to 15 minutes long. So thanks very much for watching tonight, and we'll talk to you again early next week.